Hello all, David Mark Herring here, inventor of the MyoVision, and I'm going to talk to you about this real huge change in 2015, the, the, and the, the cash or crash, which I mean PI practice. We don't want to crash, obviously. It's the year to flourish. Things have changed dramatically. You've seen how the economy is very upbeat. I don't know about you, but I'm really happy about the oil prices myself. Um, I guess I'll get another SUV. Um, that's probably what it's going to lead to. Just joking. I already have one. Uh, the point is that um, I want to go over all the stuff that's changed in the last year, the changes that have occurred over the last 25 years, and what it's led to for us uh, for the upcoming year, and what kind of things you may want to focus on. So, But cash or crash is one of the things that I hear from doctors on a continuous basis, that the ones that are doing cash are very happy. The ones that are doing PI work are, boy, their incomes are like, triple sometimes, quadruple what some of the other individuals are. And they've been, a lot of times what's interesting is a lot of the docs that are doing PI with the new MyVision Dynaram stuff are not talking about it. And one of the reasons I've noticed is they don't want you to know about the secret. Part of the reason is fear that, you know, in the past people have kind of overdone it, overbilled for things uh, inappropriately, etc. Uh, and in this case, things are very different. It's not like it was in the old days. We've been consistently now getting paid on this because we fought all the battles over the years. And it's really truly a, a, a device that's approved. It's There's a CPT go for billing it. It's legitimate. Uh, you don't have to be concerned, but, you know, people do cons worry about competition from their neighbors, and that's always been an issue in, in every profession. And, I, and you don't really need to worry about that. It's It's not a concern. There's plenty of of personal injury patients and attorneys around for everybody. Um, and the other thing that I, I want to bring up is the, the fact that there's there's a real legitimate way of doing PI where you don't have to be so concerned about it being this dirty business. Um, it's not. I mean, it's if it's done legitimately, you aren't playing little games, it can be very, uh, not only lucrative, but it can be really great for your patients. There's no point in, in penalizing a patient for having an auto accident. So I'm seeing this, this real cool change where a lot of the subluxation-based DCs are starting to recognize that, hey, this is a niche that's ours. I mean, nobody else really owns it. Um, MDs don't want to work with them. Uh, the physical therapists, which they're interested in treating, but they don't want to do an evaluation, and so they're staying out of it. This is our niche, and attorneys are starting to recognize that because of the use of the technology. Uh, let me see here. Is this working? Yes, it is. So here we go. So some of the things I'm going to talk about are cash practice techniques used to bolster your this area of practice, the things you can do to, in your daily life as far as a, as a doctor that can help you. Um, how to utilize technology to get and keep new patients. That's you know utilizing some of the newer stuff that we've developed. Uh, building the ethical clean PI practice. Getting attorneys to actually really seriously, no jokes, send referrals to you. There's been so many programs out there that involved us trying to get attorneys to respond to us through every trick in the book. This isn't about tricks. This is about knowing your stuff and actually having something to offer them of tremendous value and and being and having something that's actually unique, that's unique to us, that no one else has, and that makes their lives very easy. That's what the Dynaram stuff is doing now. Um, and making it fun and easy. The secret weapon, that's something that I want to talk about is the secret weapon for PI. You're going to be surprised at what, what makes this a secret weapon, but it is. And it has to do with a lot of misinformation that's been spread on uh, by insurers mainly uh, to, to have you feared into uh, not doing something that's really built into your, uh, your myovision practice. So as far as screenings and in-office tips for the cash practice, uh, doing a high-tech screening, uh, whether it's in or out of the office. I mean, a lot of docs don't, don't want to do screenings outside the office, which is fine. Uh, if you want to do them in the office, you know, getting your, your current patients and using the e-scan to send out uh, reminders to your current patients or make sure to use the e-scan so that the patients can actually see the tests and show them to their friends and family is very helpful. One of the things I'm seeing is this trend where there's a lot of new grads coming out of school that don't know what to do. Uh, get them doing uh, screenings for you, and that solves the problem of what you do with your time. Is You don't have to do screenings, but there's a lot of people looking for work out there, a lot of DCs that are just getting out of school, and they can learn a lot. Uh, you can help them learn by getting them out there and, and training them how to do a screening properly and have them do the work for you so they can bring in a lot of patients and learn how this is done properly. Um, 
the the key to the whole thing though is keeping the patient's perspective or current patients focused on their function, not their symptoms. And that means going to the objective data to show what's going on inside their bodies. That's one of the reasons we use objective data. Uh, we've had you know endorsements from sports figures, we've had endorsements from everyone under the sun, and we still haven't broken that five percent barrier uh, in terms of the percentage of the population we see. And I want to see us break through that. And I know that uh, that BJ did it by using the NCM back in the day. Um, you know, I don't know if you know this this factoid or not, but we went from non-existent to the second largest or first largest alternative healthcare provider within five years of him actually using technology in in all of his practices and everyone that worked uh, with him. And that was because he he knew back then that showing data to patients was really important. Using eScan provides that instant feedback. One of the things we're seeing as a as a problem is that we don't uh, we don't have uh, this. Patients, when they come in to see you, they forget everything you say. They walk out the door. That's all it should be, feedback. They walk out the door, and they don't remember a, sing, a single thing you said or maybe 10% of what you said. When you use eScan and send the test to them, it's their personalized scan results, and it instantly gives them feedback reminding them what you said. So the other thing is to integrate technology, which maximizes your exposure. That's what the eScan does, too. Stop, the car shakes. Now, a couple of days ago, I was coming down this... Put your hand here. Brakes. Quarters. Calipers. It's the calipers. It's okay. Oh, Roy! Calipers! Don't you want to take out some tools or something? No, that's not how we do things here. Don't worry about it. Roy! That's not natural. Is that great or what? That kind of tells the story. We don't really want to be that guy, right? We want to be not viewed like that, which means that's why we use technology. And what I found really interesting is looking at my own mechanic. Uh, I went to, as you, you know, probably I race cars. And um, so when I wanted to get an alignment done, I took my Escalade in to a shop that utilizes this type of technology where they show you your alignment pre with these bars. And, you know, it's, this is just like in your practice. Uh, what happened here? Think about the process. I actually go in. He's showing me this data that showing that the car's alignment is out. What do you think I did? First of all, I see him as the expert because he's able to show me something that's real and it's objective and it's on a computer printout. And uh, secondly, he shows the post adjustment, the changes that occur. So by actually doing this, he got me to commit to care. And that's kind of what happens in the cash practice when you use data. Um, I did get a call from a, a doc who has a 100% cash practice, and he called me up to thank me. He's been doing this for like 10 years now uh, with the MyVision, and he said, I wanted to tell you that, that truly one uh, care plan um, signed up, that basically with the ADA tax credit for his system, uh, that paid for the whole machine, the, the uh, one care plan signed up, and he called me up to thank me after years of doing this uh, because he was reminded again of how it made a, a huge impact on that patient to determine to uh, undergo care. And the same thing here, I decided to do this. This guy's backed up three months now for alignments. What I love about this is the fun, it's kind of funny. They're using the same exact terminology as us, making the adjustments. It's on a computer screen. Very cool stuff, and if they're doing it and we're not, then we kind of got trouble. So... Now, the reason the static EMG works so well, and, you know, for those that are looking at using EMG versus thermography, thermography is great if you're an upper cervical practitioner. It really works well in, in general, and it's a fantastic tool. The problem is two things. One is the patient can't feel a 0.3 degree centigrade difference between left and right sides. Um, they can feel muscle tension. So it gives you instant credibility when you show the level, levels of muscle tension on this graph that correlate and match up with the muscle tension they're feeling. And you have to remember that we don't remember or we're not aware of all the time of the, the various issues we have. We forget about them. We get desensitized to them. Like, I can't feel my watch right now. They can't feel the problem with their shoulder or their mid-back or their low back because they've gotten accustomed to it. So using this the static EMG as a patient awareness tool gives you instant credibility just like the graph does for the mechanic, the, auto line, the wheel alignment mechanic, and leads the patient to choose you for the one they want to undergo care because you're going to track their progress. By using this new EP stress score, it makes it even easier. We'll explain that a little bit. I want you to think, though, I want you to think of the static EMG as the blood pressure cuff for spinal health. We use the blood pressure cuff to track our, our heart health. Um, we use the static EMG to track our spinal health. It's going to go up and down based on what happens to you. 
what you've done to yourself, the trauma, this, that, whatever, how much uh, exercising you're doing, things like falling down and getting out of a car on ice, the way the East Coast is right now. Um, but by using it this way, you're going to find that it's a much more valuable way of viewing this for you and for your patient. Now, wireless screenings, this is actually super cool. Take advantage of this 50-foot range that exists on the MyoVision test, and now we're doing these tests. The new software makes it so the test is super fast. The device settles much quicker, and you can see by going out to them at a distance using a larger screen that it draws them all in. So doing wireless screenings using a larger screen, they're so inexpensive right now, you know, 150 bucks for a 32-inch display, which works great. And these people now are so engaged that every one of these screenings where I've had you go out, and, and that's why I designed, by the way, the wireless system to have a 50-foot range. It cost me about a million dollars. Um, is because of the fact that it allowed you to go out at a screening, and it's way more effective than trying to drag them in to you. And you go out, and this is how well it works. Now, most people that are doing this, you'll see people line up as soon as you get going. You can see the ones on the screen here. They're all lined up, and behind them, there's more people. They want to know what it's about, and they all want to get tested. So make sure to do that when you're doing screenings. So eScan, though, is, is one of the coolest ways to do this, and when you're done doing those tests, make sure to send them via eScan to their smartphones. Now, what I did was I decided to skip the whole uh, use of an app because of the fact there's about 900 million apps out there, and no one's, people are kind of sick of installing them. Who knows what's going to happen? But I decided to use email instead, which is part of the patent. And what, it, what I found, and it was a byproduct of this, was the fact that they receive it. I didn't think of it at the, first, at the time, but they receive it three times. They get it on their phone 10 seconds after you test them. They get it on their iPad because everybody's got an iPad these days. And they also get it in their email, so they're getting three reinforcements for what it is you said. Now, when I first did this in beta testing, what shocked me was the, and it exposed this giant hole that we have, this gap we have in the chiropractic arena, where you may have someone that came in to see you uh, because they were in pain, they were in an auto accident, whatever, you know, that's kind of the truth in most times, most ways. But the uh, patients that wanted to continue to see you as a cash patient have this problem at home, which is that people are always saying, why are you still seeing the chiropractor? There's skeptics at home. Well, what was really cool about this was the first thing people said in beta testing when they received this on their phone in the office, because it shows up 10 seconds later, is, wow, that's really cool, and my chiropractor school for having this. The second thing is, now I can show my husband why I'm seeing my chiropractor or why I still see, need my chiropractor. What was also very cool was the number of patients, if, you know, if they see you before lunch or before they go to dinner, what's the first thing they're going to show their friends and family? Well, this is your electronic business card. It's got your information in it down here. This is indelibly there forever. It's your e-biz card. And what was amazing to me is the number of patients that post this stuff on Facebook. It's everybody has about 160 friends on average. That means you're getting advertising to at least 160 individuals, and people want to come in and see you to have this test done. Again, the validation for care, needed for care is really a big deal. Uh, getting referrals is amazing. How many husbands saw this and came in for a test themselves? Guys like gadgets. Uh, reinforcing the message is a really big deal. You know, they don't remember what you're saying. It's, it, this helps in, the, in reinforcing that message. As far as tools for screening, we have these at store.myovision.com. People always ask, well, how do you send these e-scans via email when you're at a screening and there's no Internet access? Well, all phones these days have personal hotspots built in. You may have to activate it, but you'll see it on your phone, or you can get a, an actual hotspot itself. And we're using optimized files that are so tiny that it's not going to drive up your data usage at all. Uh, the, so make sure to use a, a wireless hotspot. Uh, plug your phone into the USB port on your computer to charge it so you don't have to worry about it going dead. Uh, also, this great banner uh, or pull-up is a fantastic way to get attention. I always recommend using a 32-inch or larger TV. Um, and you can have the whole setup on this tripod, which goes away. TV just comes right off it, and you end up with this thing that folds up into this tiny space. Great little way to do a screening, um, be effective, and have a small amount of stuff to carry. So what do you think about it? I think it's so cool. Uh, look what at my it? change. Wow, that's I'm great. Going from, yeah, was it 74? Yep. So 30, no, 53. 53. Yeah. And it's really good. Now look at here. Look at my spine. It's wonderful now. Wow, look at the difference. <laughs> See it here. Yeah, it's really, really amazing. And you see it up there. That's absolutely. I had one, one adjustment. One adjustment. So and, um, do you think everybody should have this? Of 
course. As, of as, course. A, as a patient, do you see things differently having it I this way? It really, really, really. I think it's very important for the patient to see it visually. Uh -huh. Because now I can actually, I, I can also, maybe I can feel it, but not now. Right. Now I'm not feeling anything. Right. Maybe in some days or in yeah. hours. But actually, I see it on the screen. Uh -huh. That's great. And I think it's pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> What's cool about this, um, to tell you how well this works, this was at a hotel where the staff, not a single one, had ever been to a chiropractor. And uh, we did tests in the lobby. We were teaching a class, and we're showing some students in the lobby how this works. And all the staff were, were tested with this. What did it lead to? Every single one of them said, wow, that is me. One of the things I always tell people is don't talk, let the patient, let the prospective patient talk. It's amazing how they'll tell you by looking at it when you explain we're looking at levels of muscle tension, the bars are proportional to levels of muscle tension, how they get it right away and start telling you what's going on. You don't have to oversell this. They'll actually see it. But when they saw these issues that they knew were real, their first question was, well, what do I do about it? You know, they looked to the person doing the test saying, what do I do about it? And you know, before you know it, every single one of these people is adjusted for the first time, all because of the fact that we're able to show them what you feel yourself with your hands, but we're able to show it to them objectively on a computer screen in a graphics form that they actually found, you know, attractive and meaningful. So what is the EP stress score? It means electrophysiological stress score. We've simplified the static EMG, and it's, it's really not us. It was a researcher uh, doing a research study at the VA hospital that noticed this. So how does it work? We're looking at a sum of all the electrical activity. We add up all electrical activity about the spine and come up with this number, which is a, literally a sum. And this is an example of a pre and post adjustment done, pre adjustment test, and then 10 minutes after adjustment, we did a post test. You can see how this changed from 253 down to 108. So the, uh, we typically don't use it this way. It, the concept here is used as a baseline measure. Um, but this is demonstrative. It shows how well this actually works to put this into a single number. The study that was done on this, uh, initially there was a couple studies done, but they looked at how the VAS score correlated with a static EMG. And it turns out that it correlates very highly with static EMG. And what they did was they did a control group study. Uh, there was 30 per group. And they saw those over three months that did not respond to care. And by the way, this, these, uh, the doctors here, MDs, work with chiropractors. Uh, that's how this got used in the first place. Um, the pre-test, uh, you can see the, the VS score was 6.6 .6 with the uh, EP stress score of 884. And it, it didn't drop significantly, so the VS score stayed the same, 6.8709. Those that did respond over three months, their VS score went from 6 to 1. Their static EMG EP stress score, 542 to 180. Significant change, a real big deal. Uh, it showed, again, the value of using the EP stress score as a baseline measure over time. Now, what's also really cool about it is that that big question that always comes up about static EMG and reproducibility. Now, you know that if you use it a lot, that you know that it works really well and it is very reproducible. But we do see these phenomena where the muscles fire on one side more and then the other side, this was two tests done in a row in front of 150 people in an audience of, of chiropractors that were asking this question. When you add this summed muscle activity, why is it that the readings are almost identical? These are only off by 10 millionths of a volt. Well, we do the test standing because standing tests are significantly better clinically than doing a seated test, which really is just an ergonomic study of the chair. When you're doing a seated test, it's like an EKG. The standing test is like a stress EKG where you're actually stressing them by maintaining that. They have to maintain their own posture, which means you're going to see the compensation for subluxation much more demonstratively and clearly. But we have the issue in standing of sway. So when the muscles, when the body sways back and forth, these readings may switch sides, but guess what? The overall reading stays the same. And so, again, it shows how well the machine actually really works. It removes the issue of sway because those numbers are the same. No matter what you see on the graph here, um, it works uh, perfectly. Now, there's going to be two uh, different patterns you're going to see over time as far as the EP stress score. Uh, the first, when you're tracking progress over time, condition one is they come in acute, 
the muscles are going to start high. The EP stress group is going to start high and drop over time. So here's an example of one started at 175. This is real off a clinical study. By the way, if you add the new software, it will bring in all your patients from your patient database. The EP stress score will apply to all of your data from going back to, I believe, 96. Uh, if you have a wired system, when you upgrade, this will actually work with it. This does not work with the software does not work in the wired system. All this is for the wireless. Um, sorry about that. We can't continue to maintain software for a machine that's 20 years old. Um, we've done our best, but they stopped making parts. So here you can see 175. It drops down at eight weeks and drops significantly at five months. So you see this, the readings drop over time. The next condition is when they come in and they're actually chronic. So they're in a fatigue state in the beginning. This reading down here, when you see yellow readings, that's a good sign that you've got muscles and fatigue. This is probably your worst area. And the initial readings are going to be uh, 206. This is not a great example of a chronic because they usually are really low all over the place, but still it shows this change. It went from 206 to a 10 weeks to 316. So you go, oh, my God, why did it change in what appears to be a negative way? Well, they start firing more normally. over, And then what you see over a period of time is them balancing out nicely and the readings dropping to 162. So that's how you use it as a baseline. I don't recommend using the uh, EP stress score at a screening because it doesn't necessarily mean anything. You need to be able to get the individual baseline and see the changes over time. And so the screenings is not so great for that. So the crash world, the area of personal injury, this is where things are really doing extremely well. Um, We've seen docs, you know, literally triple their income in one year by doing this. Uh, and why, my goal in setting up the the, uh, the secret weapon was so that we could dictate care to insurers. I really got sick seeing this in the both everywhere in the medical world, all in healthcare, where you know we have people go to school for all these years and they're being told by an insurance adjuster what the appropriate treatment is. That, that makes absolutely no sense to me. So I that's that incensed me leading me to develop a tool which provides objective data that prevents the insurer from telling you what to do. And that's what's happening now. That's what we're, what we're seeing. There was actually a, an individual on the MyVision website under the Dynaron page. He's 72 years old, and he said the machine paid for itself in just two uh, patients uh, due to the fact he got full payment from uh, two PI cases, which he says the first time in 35 years that's ever happened. They don't want to argue it because they've lost so many cases in court. The last thing they want to do is uh, argue and lose and, and be forced to pay. So they'd rather pay out up front and not have to deal with the cost of legal expenses. Um, What's, what it's leading to is having attorneys refer patients to you for a change. And this has all occurred due to a lot of major changes in terms of how this is perceived by attorneys. And this will be explained in a second. It reduces the stress of your patients' lives because you have validation that their, their injuries are real. And that can't be underestimated, the value that has. Uh, you're never going to see or rarely see an attorney ask you to cut your bill again because of the fact that everybody gets paid. But mainly, you're going to get the respect you deserve as a doctor. And one of the chiropractors that kind of enlightened me to this in that, you know, we always wonder what MDs think of us. Well, they don't really know what we do. And she's like, I always thought they had a negative view of us until I started using the Dynarom, the MyoVision Dynarom testing. And she said what changed was that they now had something to talk to me about. I'd send the graphs over, which they love data. And so they had somebody to talk about, and it led them to actually respecting her and sending patients to her as someone that understands something that they don't, yet this bridged that communication gap by having something that they can have a discussion about, a huge impact that's had on how healthcare providers view us. This is an example of what happened. Uh, I was asked to speak a few months ago at the uh, Washington Association of Justice meeting, and it was pretty funny. There was... 150 in that room and maybe 250 total um, because it was webcast. And there were four, four attorneys in the room that had direct experience with this. Uh, they all thought that EMG was static EMG. No one knew about the Dynarom testing. And in Washington State, it's an approved diagnostic device. It's on the Washington State website, the state's website. It's an approved diagnostic device. Um, but after speaking of this, I've been hammered by attorneys who are sending patients to docs that have the machine. And it's interesting how they're calling it the lie detector test for back pain. 
Um, of those four, three of the four said that their settlements were significantly higher. The second one, the, the last person, though, was interesting. I had done the test myself, and the, the, the attorney said that he wished he listened. Uh, in that case, um, and attorneys love to know if they have a good case up front or not. This is the way to do it. He said, I wish I listened to you. I did the test on the patient and said, you know, I don't care what you say or he says or how much grunting and groaning. There's nothing wrong with this patient. So it does show objectively that both those that are injured and those that are not. It gives you credibility. So let's go through the steps that, that were taken to build this tool f into the secret weapon that it is and why it's a secret weapon. I was in a recent, uh, in a major case, a million dollar soft tissue case. If you want to get my, uh, my paperwork on this, the actual rebuttal to their expert witness, um, a very well-known uh, professor, um, you can always uh, go to the website, go under the Dynaron page, and click on Request More Information. You can actually check that you want to receive the uh, rebuttal that I wrote. It was, uh, it was uh, quite devastating to uh, the defense uh, in this case. It's going to court uh, soon. But the point here is that their expert said there was basically no studies on service EMG. Imagine what happened to him in this case when I do a simple PubMed search under service electromography and 8,267 studies show up. Kind of destroys the person's credibility. Attorneys love it because of the fact now no word he says can be trusted in any of his evaluation of this patient. The second step in doing this was to demolish insurer's position. So in this case in Florida, I don't know if everyone everyone knows about this. There were three. Myself is the only expert witness. Um, this is all driven by Dr. Richard Merritt, a phenomenal DC, who refused to take no for an answer and called around, and asked who's going to join him to fight all the service CMG experts in the country, and not a single one showed up. I'm the only person that did, and it was myself against 300 insurers, 75 attorneys, state of Florida, nine expert witnesses. Um, and uh, the result was that this court, and it went to the Superior Court where it was, uh, we won there, and also the Supreme Court of Florida apparently rejected their appeal. Uh, they spent, I think, millions of dollars on this. Um, but they determined that the service EMG has achieved a level of medical acceptance as a viable diagnostic tool for injuries of the spine and upper and lower back. And so there's a statute in Florida requiring payment for this. This has affected the rest of the United States. Admissibility has never been a problem since this case. Um, step three is getting a CPT code. So we have, we perform now the test, takes the same time as range of motion testing, but pays about five times more. The codes 96002 and 96004, it also establishes that it is a valid tool. That can't be argued, that's what it says in the CPT code book. You have to be a valid tool to get a five digit code. Step four is winning the support of all healthcare providers. I didn't want to, one of the goals I had in this was to, uh, to, basically in the courtroom get rid of this problem where you know attorneys have, have said if they'll they won't tell you this directly but they'll tell me they'd rather work with an MD because they feel like the credibility of the MD is greater in the courtroom before a jury that used to be the case I wanted to level the playing field and instead uh, we actually took control over it completely how we gather data you'll see no IME gathers any data of any value at all and so when we started gathering data uh, we get to show it in the courtroom to the to the uh, jury, and that's it. We win. Data wins over opinion 100% of the time. But winning the support of all healthcare providers makes it easy. When we're in the AMA's book, they chose a chiropractic tool as the tool of choice for evaluating injury in the AMA's medical book on range of motion testing. Uh, that was a big deal. And John Gearhart was the guy who invented and developed all the range of motion testing and used the myovision for 12 years uh, when he concluded that it really is not worth doing range of motion without service EMG because of the fact that it effectively augments it. Sensitivity and specificity go up significantly when you add the muscle activity because that's the lie detector part of it. The next thing which I, th I love seeing this was having a subluxation based DC go into the court. In the past you go into the court and talk about subluxation. The other side, um, if you're lucky you have a chiropractor who's an IME, uh, if you're, I mean, or an MD, um, and then you don't have to worry about, you know, your your use of language. Uh, but the point is that when you go into the courtroom, uh, having a subluxation-based DC go up against a a very ex an excellent, really well skilled, knowledgeable IME who's also a chiropractor, but to go into the court and actually uh, dominate the courtroom by using service EMG is was key and this happened recently and the insurers I know took this case on and went to court because they thought 
uh, that Markarian's not involved. It's going to be uh, them versus this DC, and he's subluxation based. He won't know what he's talking about uh, because they've dominated those cases so often. But that's not what happened because he did use data. But the key here is that this attorney and chiropractor are so well versed in this that the attorney did not let the IME doctor focus the talk on static EMG only because that's the only way they can actually win these discussions. And you can see, and that's talking about static EMGs, isn't it? Yes. Okay, didn't he do dynamic range of motion, Dynarom SEMGs? That's correct. Well, there's so many studies on this. The jury uh, loved the data better than the opinion of the IME, and we won this case, which put to rest this, this question of whether or not insurers are going to be able to stop us because they can't at this point. Getting attorneys, you just see the changes that have occurred here since that case. Uh, the attorneys all know about this now in the state. It's spreading all over the country. But this this uh, attorney actually put in writing, and he showed a list of all of the the offers made and the settlements, and they were approximately 10 times greater. Um, and he points out that that they do want evidence, and it does make their jobs easy in the courtroom. And uh, this is this was a very cool for having an attorney to actually do that. A year ago, I couldn't get an attorney to talk to me about this stuff or speak. Now I have them lined up, and I'm working with them on a continuous basis. The next step was we went before the Bar Association. Um, we did a presentation on this. This is Alan Fraley at the Association of Justice. Um, and we were able to show all the attorneys, get them educated, and that's key. Now, we've got some really cool materials coming out for this, including a video to help uh, get other attorneys to, to understand what this is about. Once they're educated on it, they buy in very quickly because of the belief it's static EMG and the reality that it's dynamic EMG changed the game for them. So what is Dynaram all about? Very simply, we're looking for muscle guarding. Uh, and because by simultaneously measuring range of motion and muscle activity. So we graph the range of motion on the bottom, which shows us not only the endpoint range of motion, but how they move, the quality of motion. And we measure left and right lumbar, left is blue, right is red, lumbar activity on the top. So we're graphing their muscular response to see if they're injured. This shows a person who's completely normal, muscle shut off and flexion. That's a normal test. But why is it that everyone responds so negatively? You bring it up with attorneys, with everyone, they say, oh, service EMG is dumb. Um, well, I recently had a meeting with a, a, a needle EMG guy who said, oh, yeah, it's stupid. I, you don't have to even talk to me about it. I know all about it. I go, well, tell me how it works if you know all about it. And he goes, you just touch down to the skin. You get this, you know, quick readings, and it shows this, this graph showing a body with bars sticking out. I go, really? That's, that's, what about what's in the AMA book here? He's like, what is that? That's not. EMG and I go yeah well it actually is and you can see that we're actually graphing and as soon as you show them this now what I've done in the software is the new software actually has and this will be released shortly you can still you can actually get it um, there's a form to fill out to get this uh, a, a quote on what it costs for the upgrade but we put the body images in here which is not only made it easy to show this to juries but attorneys get it immediately everybody gets it immediately because it shows what's going on with the body we have both male and female images uh, the point is that they want you to talk about this. That's, makes it, that's what makes it a secret weapon. They want you to talk about static EMG only and believe that that's all there is. And if you look at every denial letter written, they, there's only two references ever in there. One's to needle EMG, which is silly because we're not doing needle EMG. And the other one is referencing static EMG, not dynamic, hoping you don't know the difference. Once you show the difference, it's huge. But bigger than that the paradigm shift the huge paradigm shift did you know that when you're doing range of motion traditional range of motion on its own you're actually working for the insurance companies we've been gathering data now long enough to see this phenomenon this is an actual real case that went to court and the IME did endpoint range of motion and found that there was a 50 degree 52 degree range of motion in the lumbar spine in this patient which was normal the DC the treating doc did range of motion on its own also and found 52 degrees, approximately the same amount of, of uh, range of motion for the same patient. But the difference is, when he combined it with muscle activity, he was able to show that there was guarding, a guarding response, even though they had normal range of motion. Range of motion on its own, in about 50% of the cases, and you all know this, you've seen it, they're in pain, and you know there's guarding, but you can't prove it because the range of motion shows normal. One of the docs I spoke to who teaches PI was saying, we just documented by writing down that the patient said, ow, 
And he goes, you're documenting the owl objectively. I'm like, yes, exactly. So people are getting this now, uh, but without the guarding response, which is worth 5 to 8% in the AMA guides. I don't know how people are missing this, but it is. Uh, you really have a difficult time winning. This case uh, settled for $300,000. Um, they cut it in half for uh, having to do with something that the, the uh, patient did. But still, this would have been zero dollars. This case would have never gone anywhere. Uh, what you can see here, just so you understand, you're bending in a flexion. Muscles fire like crazy in full flexion. You get the uh, muscle guarding response. In a normal, you bend in a flexion, muscle shut off. That's all there is to it. If we used range of motion alone, we'd be in trouble. So the interpretation has gotten so simple now. We also generate a report, which is really cool. But you bend in a flexion, muscles are normal. In inflection, muscles are acute um, or chronic. So we have the muscles firing in a, acute. They're firing like crazy. Chronic's in the middle. No firing is normal. Those are the three cases. That's all you're ever going to see. And the graphics make it simple. Now, what's the result of all this is this whole thing I was talking about, about validating the, the patient. It's amazing how many calls I get from patients crying, saying, thank you for inventing this thing because no one believed me. I mean, their attorneys don't believe them. Their friends and family don't believe them. Soft tissue injury is elusive. And when you can actually show it on a graph, it makes their lives so easy. They can go home and, and show it to their friends and family, and it reduces their stress so significantly. This is something that even attorneys have brought this up, how valuable this has been for their clients in that they no longer feel, and, and the truth is, when you have someone who's actually don't, is not really injured, is really not that bad, um, I've had this happen, uh, you redirect them, you get them to do something, uh, I had one, when I showed him the test results, said, okay, these are normal, tell me what's going on, he said, I just don't want to go back to work, and I sent him to a career counselor, That's, that was the best thing for him, and I guarantee you six months from then, he would have been happy that I did that. So as far as some of the new software features, with the e-scan and EP stress score, a couple things you're going to notice. First of all, the battery life's gone up like crazy um, by about four to, four to five times. And, and part of the reason is that the, we noticed that those that were having problems with the battery life with a static EMG, uh, with a scan vision, it was because they were talking to patients while they were doing the test and they weren't really going through and finishing the test quickly. So we have a battery saver feature which shuts off the device and all you do is hit the button to turn it back on again when you're done talking to the patient and go to the next level. So battery life's gone up like crazy. You'll also notice that the scan time, we've reduced the, um, the scan time by about a third and the reason is that it st settles. If you see in these videos, you'll see that it settles very quickly. You touch down to the skin and boom, it settles. And that's a new uh, uh, algorithm for how Autoscan works, one of the really great things about it. The software has a really sophisticated new look to it. Um, eScan obviously is valuable, and the EP stress score uh, makes it easy. You can turn these on and off. There's so many things you can alter. You can change the depth of color in this, and if you still want to print these, you can. Uh, you can change, make them black and white so you don't use uh, ink if you don't want to. We put that feature in too. Uh, another big feature that you know we haven't really discussed that much, but you know in this green world, um, you were saving approximately 500,000 sheets of paper per year by going to eScan versus uh, printing out these, um, and the patient has it forever. For the dynamic EMG, we now have it so that it generates a report. Uh, the report's all filled in with all your information, the patient's information. All you have to do is, is select from these drop-downs. It also includes the AMA's uh, normal range of motion and their actual patient data um, and provide you with this information. Um, in addition, we have the ability now to show you on screen the ideal with the patient so you can see them both at the same time. Your ideals here and we have both male and female graphs or, or images and we can show them side by side and these are live um, windows so you can actually click on each one of these tabs and move through the actual test. So I can show you what that looks like in the test here. So as you're looking at these, we can look at lateral flexion. Here's our normal. Here's our patient. You can see it's abnormal. You can compare left and right sides. This one's firing together. That's guarding. This is not guarding. And that's it. So you can go through all of them and see these. Uh, very simple. It's also part of the new software upgrade that comes with it. The report part, all you do is right-click on... Let me show you. You can right-click on the screen and go interpretation report, and it ends up bringing it in, you into Word, and it gives you this beautiful report, nicely written, um, that shows the test, how it was performed, electrodes on. It also shows you 
the ideal for what you're looking for in the test for both rotations and lateral flexions and flexions. And all you have to do is go through and select what you see. That was an abnormal test. We go to abnormal. You can also switch back and forth by alt, using Alt-Tab and going to look at the actual test data. Here's the test data. We have an abnormal left lateral flexion. So throughout this whole thing, you simply select from these drop-downs. You're done with the interpretation in five minutes. You can put your own conclusion down here. And you can also save, put your signature here and save this into the templates folder under the WinScan 98 directory and be able to pull up your own template with your own signature in it and then file, save as a PDF and you're all set. You're done with your report. It takes about five minutes. So you're warriors and you need weapons. And Dynaram, this motion, motion SEMG is your secret weapon as far as uh, personal injury and, and, and developing a PI practice. It's the best way to do it in a clean way. It's indisputable. We've won more cases, never lost a case actually, uh, that have made it easy for you to actually do this. The uh, insurance is reimbursing at about 250 a test. Uh, it's about 75 for the test and uh, 150 for the report, which you saw there. And so it's a great way to actually uh, develop a PI practice this year and take over this niche, this whole arena, and have the attorneys actually come to you because of your skill level and your knowledge. And But you need those tools, just like any craftsman, you need the tools to build the house quickly, and MyOvision provides those tools. If you want to get the actual court documents, you can um, contact us, call us, you can email, or you can actually go to the MyOvision website, um, and you can actually fill this out. I'll show you another thing you can do there. If you're interested in the software update and if you want to upgrade from your wired to wireless system, it's a good time to do it. You can click here, fill your information in, and you'll a specialist get in contact with you, providing you with your upgrade price based on how old the system is and when your last version was. Um, if you'd like to receive the actual rebuttal that I wrote for the most recent uh, case, you can go to Dynaram Injury Valuation. You can also select it in there too. Uh, and you can request send more info and you can select in there to send that to you and you'll receive uh, the rebuttal that was written. So let's see if there's, let's see what kind of questions we have here. Go ahead and check the questions. All right. Okie doke, we've got lots of questions. So let me go through them all one at a time. All right. Well, that's okay. Let's sometimes. Oh, so there's a the question here. Um, anyways, thank you all for being on. Uh, I'm going to cover these questions. Thank you for being on. And uh, 